It's like 87% of real estate agents fail, you know, in their first year. 87%. It's a massive number. When I was 20 years old, I, I actually flunked out of college. I went to four different colleges in two years and I just kind of decided I was not going to go that route. So I took the real estate class, got my real estate license. It took me eight months to make my first sale. Once I hit my first sale, kind of off to the races, I made a lot of money fast. By the time I was 23, I made a million dollars and then lost everything, went completely bankrupt in the crash. So I was, uh, I was sleeping on friends' couches, I was sleeping in my car, I was uh, you know back to roofing houses, and I worked on an oil rig for a year. So yeah, during that time I read like 100 books, and uh, realized, that's when I realized everything, man. That's, I, I really took a hard look at my business up to that point and I realized that the reason why I failed was because I was so focused on the deal. I was so focused on just getting deals done. I didn't really too much care about the people necessarily. I mean, I did, but I didn't. It was more about the money I was making and trying to get more deals done. And when you're so focused on that, you kind of lose sight of the bigger picture that each prospect is actually worth 10 to 20 deals to you over the life of your career if you create that deep relationship. And I was just hitting them one, you know, hit, hit, I was a hit and run kind of agent. You know, I was just hitting them, hitting them, closing them, running, hitting them, closing them, running. You know, you just can't build a sustainable business. You know, it's all about accumulating, man, accumulating relationships. You know, you accumulate relationships over the years. You know, and, and, and within three to five years as you accumulate these relationships and continue to build your personal brand, your business just explodes out of nowhere. You know what I mean? Then from there, I got back in real estate in 2008 and uh, started building my business the right way. You know what I mean? Like correctly, you know, valuing people, listening to them, trying to really figure out what they're trying to do and trying to figure out how I can help them do it. And I started accumulating these relationships and by 2014, I became the number one REMAX agent in Alabama um, and I was selling 100 properties a year. So I've closed 100 deals a year every year since. And in uh, 2017, I wrote those two books and started speaking and writing and coaching and stuff. I became the world's first completely free real estate coach. It's been a wild ride. When you think about your best students, like what is the difference between somebody who succeeds and somebody who fails in real estate based on what you see nowadays? I think the number one thing is confidence, man. You know, um, people just aren't confident, you know, either in themselves or in the market itself or, you know, they just don't believe, you know, that I think that's the biggest thing that I see with people that don't make it is they're just, they're caught up in the minutia of just not, not believing in their self, you know, like, like they're scared to talk to people because they don't want to sound dumb, right? It's like nobody expects you to know everything, you know, like you don't have to know everything. You know, I was telling an agent the other day, it's like, She's worried about sounding dumb. And I said, well, you could spend all these hours studying and trying to memorize all these facts that you think you might need to know in case somebody asks you, and then show up to the meeting, and then what? They'll ask you a question you weren't, you didn't prepare for. Because you're never gonna know everything. You know, so in my mind, it's like going to every situation knowing that if you do get a question you don't know the answer to, be honest with them. Say, listen, let me let me figure that answer out. I'll get right back to you, or whatever the case may be. People are just scared, man. Their confidence level is so low for whatever reason. And because of that, because of that, because of fear and confidence, right, it paralyzes them from taking action. You know, it paralyzes them and freezes them in place where they don't take the actions necessary to, to, uh, to succeed, man. Let me tell you something about real estate, bro. You have to be all in from day one. You're like behind. Every day you're trying to catch up. I mean, you have to be so full steam ahead to even survive, you know, in your first year. It's like not, it's like 87% of real estate agents fail, you know, in their first year. 87%. It's a massive number. I just think that people, they get caught up in the minutia, they get overwhelmed, they're scared, they're not confident, and because of all that, they just don't take action. And before they know it, they can't, they can't pay their bills and they gotta, they gotta quit. Everybody starts at nothing. Right? Everybody started at zero, you know, and worked their way up. Everybody. So you're not just going to walk into a situation where now you are you just know everything, you're super confident. You're, no, everybody walks into the same situation of, you know, not necessarily knowing everything or being confident and you have to face those fears, 
right? You have to run to the, you have to lean into those actions that make you nervous, right? And you have to become numb to that feeling. And then you have to power through it and just keep moving through the actions that you know are gonna get you where you wanna be. And most people just can't stomach it, man. They, I'll tell you what, a lot of people, they work really hard and what happens is they run into their first loss. You know, like they had this deal going, you know, say it was gonna be their first deal and something goes wrong and it doesn't work out. They can't handle it, like they can't stomach that feeling. They just, they, they're just like, they're crushed and they can't handle it. Whereas on the other side of the coin, winners, now winners understand the amount of losses it takes to win. It takes so many losses to actually get to the W's that, that most people just can't, you know, weather the amount of losses you actually have to take, you know? So winners just have, they, they have the stomach it takes to absorb those losses because they take a loss and they think, okay, that was cool, right? I learned something, right? And now I have more to, to more knowledge and more experience on my next deal, you know? And they take that loss and turn it into a W.